Good morning. Good morning to all of you that are here this morning. Wow, this is a really, really good crowd of folks that are here. And for everybody that is watching over live stream, as we said every week during this time, we are together in spirit and in truth. And today is an important day. It's an important day for so many different reasons. And you know, one of the things that is important about today is that even though our church building is back open in a limited way, and there are folks gathered here. It's an important day because we recognize the church was never closed. That the church has never been a building. It's the people of God. And so during these last two and a half months, as you have been in your homes and, and been out in limited ways, uh, we have been ushered into a new era of being the church. That uh, the church scattered is unstoppable. Uh, when God sends his people out and amongst the culture. But we are really, really excited that, uh, at least in a limited way, we can be gathered here. It's also an important day because uh, we remember Memorial Day. We take time to pause and to remember all of those who uh, gave their life uh, the ultimate sacrifice and service to our country. So uh, I would just emphasize again, take time. Uh, this weekend to really pause and reflect and remember the sacrifice that was made for our freedoms. And uh, it's an important day because this is the last day that I'm with you in person right now uh, as your pastor. And I'll be saying some more remarks about that a little bit later on. Uh, but uh, first, let me just say that we just need to emphasize that uh, we at least for the next few weeks for the foreseeable future are, are in sort of a new phase where we are able to gather here in person, but we just need to remind everybody it is still completely optional for you to come. Please, if it is most safe for you to stay at home, we encourage you to do that until such time uh, that uh, you feel comfortable health-wise to come. But when we gather, we will still just have this one service in this building. Uh, we will be practicing social distancing, wearing uh, masks, hand sanitizing, uh, just trying to keep as safe as possible. So we had sent out to you all the guidelines uh, about what we need to do in order to meet as a church. Uh, so please review that. And I'm sure that as the governor and the government send out more uh, notices about different restrictions being lifted, we will keep you up to date about that. So stay connected through the Facebook page and through the email for all of the uh, things that you need to know. But I'll be saying a few more remarks here in a little while, uh, but it's also an important day because it's Sunday morning. It is the Lord's day. It's when we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord, and that means that we're here to worship, that we're here to worship together in spirit and truth. And so let's worship the Lord together this morning. Lillian, come and lead us with some music. Good morning, everyone. It's good to be here today. We're going to start this morning with My Redeemer Lives. Please stand as you are able.
to this church and uh, you picked us up and you put us back together and um, we wish you the best really so enjoy the video
thank you. I, I'm not going to try to put that sweater on right now because I filled it with that sweater during that series. Uh, um, wow. Um, thank you for that. Um, I also noticed that um, halfway through those pictures, I went from being filled out to skinny to filled out again. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, gosh. I'm sorry. That's it's okay. <clears throat> I'm going to try to say some remarks and, and then pray <clears throat> as the world watches. Um, I've just really <clears throat> been moved. And, um, <sighs> give me a minute. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, that's right. There's no crying in baseball. I need to take a sip of water. Um, I'm really going to miss you, but <clears throat> we are going to stay in touch. We're going to stay friends, and um, in this world of <clears throat> staying connected, it's easier than ever for us to do that, and uh, I know I speak for my family that um, we really are looking forward to come back we can all be together and eat a meal. You know I love to eat, right? <laughs> so we can eat a meal together and have a chance to um, hug one another. Um, I didn't expect to get this uh, emotional, I'm sorry. <clears throat> um, the years that I've spent here, though they were three years, have been fruitful. They've been um, full of the Lord's blessings. And each and every one of you have played a part in doing amazing things for the kingdom of God. And that's going to continue. Uh, the seeds that we've planted together are going to uh, be planted in the ground. And they are going to be one. And the light of God's grace is going to cause them to grow. And you will continue to be fruitful in your ministry to this community. But I want to thank each and every one of you for the time that we spent together for the prayers. Um, I also noticed in that video, I watched my children go from this tall to this tall. And um, the way that you have supported us and ministered to our family has just been incredible. So, um, yeah, I don't quite know what else to say other than... Um, we love you, and we're going to miss you, and I know that you feel the same way, but uh, I just know that uh, God has wonderful things in store for this church, and uh, he, you are in good hands when God is your leader. So, um, but yes, thank you for your graciousness to us, for your generosity. Uh, it's been a great honor to be your pastor, but more importantly, your friend. So thank you, my friends. Let's, let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. God, you are the Lord of our hearts. And I thank you. I have great gratitude on this day for how you have led our lives. You have led this church over the last few years. And you have brought us to a place together of a new beginning. Lord, in these last few years, you revealed yourself to us in new ways. And some of those were through the hard times, and a lot of those were through the joyous times. And so I pray that today would be a day that we remember and we reflect and we, we cherish and ponder in our hearts all of what you have been about in our midst. And Lord, we pray, we pray for this situation in our nation that thankfully is beginning to subside, but we continue to pray for uh, your guidance and your, uh, your presence to be with us and, and showing us new ways to be your people, showing us new ways to be the church, to reach out to others. We do continue to pray for the health of all of those uh, who are who are working on the front lines. And we pray for health and restoration 
for all those who might have the virus. Lord, we are seeing glimpses of hope and light at the end of this tunnel. We know, Lord, that you are leading us forward. And so we pray for our nation and for our community. And Lord, I pray that you would bless each uh, member and attender of this church and those uh, watching by live stream that are also involved. Lord, that they would be blessed by you and that you would use them right where they are to spread your gospel, to advance your kingdom. And Lord, we look forward to a day when we can be a little bit more hands-on in our ministry. But until then, Lord, teach us ways to wait upon you. May we be matured and tested during this time, that we would take the opportunity to grow, to seek you, and to be closer to you more than any other time in our lives. So that when the time is right, we can be set loose on the world and show ourselves to be your disciples. And there will be a great awakening like one we've not seen in our lifetime. Lord, we are thankful that you are God and you are in control. And I just pray on this day that we would place our faith and our trust in you. Would you just make us willing and available to listen to your spirit and to always follow after you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to continue our time of worship this morning with some more singing. You may stay seated. Um, this is uh, the church's one foundation. We're going to sing the first and last verse of this.
for us to reflect upon today and a scripture that we can talk about for a little bit that might contain some encouraging words, some words for you to take with you from this day into the weeks and months and really the years to come and was praying about um, and reflecting on my time here and I fell upon this scripture from Matthew 13 which is just a little story, a little parable that Jesus told one time about what the kingdom of God is like. So it's Matthew 13, 31 and 32. And it says, Then he told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man planted in his field. And though it is the smallest of all the seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree, so that the birds come and perch in its branches. Now, I don't know if you remember this, but this passage, this text, was one of the first series of messages that I did when I came here. And I don't know if you remember, I, I had a little bowl of mustard seeds, and I kind of walked around and showed it to you so you could see just how small it is, and had you hold out your hand and put some in your hand and see just how tiny the mustard seed really is. And I think sometimes when we read Jesus' parables, it's easy to just read through them and kind of easily understand them, but miss just how profound they really are. And the reason is this image of the mustard seed is so simple. It's so everyday and mundane, just a little seed, that I think it should provoke us by its simplicity. Because here's what I believe. It is a picture of what it looks like when the church is being the church. When we are being the kingdom of God. Do you remember back when we had 40 days of prayer for a new vision? And we printed up a devotional for each day of those 40 days for us to pray for our leadership as they would enter into a time of discernment over the future of our church, which um, coming out on the other end a year and a half later is your vision 2020, which I should, should say is a great plan to continue to follow every step in that vision plan. It's a roadmap for how we can move forward. But during those 40 days of prayer, uh, one of the first devotionals in that was this passage on the mustard seed. And for some reason, it just stuck with me. I could not get that image out of my head. Of the mustard seed growing into the, this big plant, it, it wouldn't leave me alone. And I think it's because it is such a true picture of what the church can be when we are being what Jesus desires us to be. So there's a couple things that stand out in this parable that are significant, I think that I wanna share with you this morning. Jesus says that the kingdom is like a little mustard seed that a man plants in his garden. Now that doesn't sound too unusual to us. We plant seeds in our garden, but this would have been completely strange, abnormal and radical for those who were listening to Jesus as he told it, because the mustard plant was basically a weed they were advised, do not plant this mustard seed, this mustard plant, in your garden because it's going to take over. And we liken it to, here in the South, kudzu. That stuff just grows and grows and it takes over and you cut it down and it grows back. It keeps popping up everywhere. That's what the mustard plant was like. It was like kudzu. And they actually had in their law that you had to have sufficient space between where you were growing your garden and your crops and where you were planting mustard. Because even the wind would pick up those little seeds and carry them, and then before too long, you had mustard plants popping up in your garden everywhere. Why is this significant that Jesus has the man in the story planting the seed in his garden? What might this mean for you? Well, I think too many times churches, if they're not careful, 
they can easily start to exist for themselves. And it's like a little secluded patch of mustard plants that's far and separate from the garden. Jesus says the opposite. He says, be planted in and among the other garden plants. Be a weed. Be kudzu in the midst of these other garden plants. Be his follower. Live like one of his followers right where you have to be planted. In your family, in your workplace, on your cul-de-sac, in your neighborhood, in your social circle, in whatever your sphere of influence. Because our faith life, our faith walk, has to impact every aspect of our life. There's no separation. Jesus was saying, plant mustard plants right there along with the other good crops. It was actually against the law of his day. And as I thought about it, in the same way, we as his followers, we're really called to be mustard plants, to be countercultural, to live against the grain of our society. And we do that by simply living the way that Jesus lived. See, my friends, if we are living out the gospel in our lives, we're living it out, we're going to be different. If you are following Jesus and living like him, you are going to be 180 degrees different than our culture. And people will take notice of that. And so with the mustard plant is a weed, it doesn't take long before it starts to spread, does it? How many of you got weeds in your garden? You pick them, you pull them up before too long, they're back. And it's almost like, they're almost like a virus. Now we know, we've heard enough about viruses, haven't we? We've been living through this COVID virus. It goes, one little virus starts to spread from person to person. But I also think in a positive way, that's the image that Jesus has given us here, that if we will live out the gospel, love will go viral. Kindness will go viral. Mercy, compassion, help, relief, servanthood will go viral. And so if you are a mustard seed and you allow God to plant you in the ground. And if you as a church continue to live out the values and the practices of the gospel, your impact in this community will go viral. It will spread. And maybe you think, well, you know, we don't have that much influence. But I'm here to tell you that you do. Because Jesus loves to take ordinary little mustard seeds, ordinary people, and make something incredible, something amazing grow and happen through them. I want you to hear that, that you have more influence as the viral carriers of the gospel than you think you have. And next, I want you to notice that Jesus said that even though the mustard seed is the smallest of all the seeds, when it's planted in the ground, it becomes a large plant, even a tree. And it says the birds of the air come and perch in its branches. Did you know that Jesus loves to do his best work through the small, through the seemingly insignificant? My friends, there is power in the small. That one tiny mustard seed, if let loose in a garden, can take over. And being small in number is never a disadvantage for God, is it? In fact, I say that if you read Scripture closely, if you read Scripture carefully, you'll see that every great work that God did in Scripture... Every great work that he does is through one person or a small group of people. See, God chose one family, Abraham's family. 
and gave us the promise of salvation. He chose one man, Moses. And through that, we have God's covenant. Remember, he made Gideon reduce his army from thousands down to 300. And we know the story of how God took a small remnant of people, just a ragtag band of them, and brought them back to the Holy Land, and they rebuilt Jerusalem. And Jesus chose a small group, just 12 little fishermen and tax collectors. And, I mean, these guys were nobodies. He chose just 12 of them, and they turned the world upside down. God's best work is through the one and through the small. I want you to remember that, that each and every one of you have a personal ministry that God can do amazing things through. And then here's the best part of this story, and I, I love this. God wants to use this church, each and every one of you, those of you watching. God wants to use this church to grow into a tree so that the birds of the air might come and perch and rest in the shade of your branches. That's all the folks in here, all the folks out here in our community, those that are hurting, those that are confused, who are tired, who are searching, who are lost. They need a refuge. They need a relief. And they need a place that they can come and rest in the shade of a tree. What a beautiful picture of what the church can be. What a beautiful picture of what the kingdom of God can be like. I believe this is who you are, Pleasant Hill. I believe it. As a people, this is who you are. And I believe that this is, this is the mission and this is the vision that God has given you. And I believe that each and every one of you are more empowered and more sensitive to the Spirit to be that mustard seed, to be people of joy, and to be people who find joy in loving people for the sake of the gospel. I believe that's who you are. So, my friends, I want to leave you with this. I want you to remember the mustard seed. Remember that God works slow and small. And that sometimes that's hard for us to understand, isn't it? We get impatient. We want the big, the flashy, and the now. But God works in small and slow ways. That God's slow and small work when it's given time, when it's given rain, when it's given sunshine, becomes a beautiful garden tree. And the birds of the air find shade in its branches. Think about that little seed and how it holds so much potential. So much life is contained in that little seed. Let God plant it. Let God plant you. He will grow you. He will bless you. Remember that little seed and rejoice in the hope that God has for you in the future. Let's pray together. <clears throat> oh Lord, we are thankful. We're thankful for each one of our lives and the time that you give us. Help us to remember that little mustard seed. It seems so small, so insignificant. Maybe even irrelevant. But within it, it holds the potential not only of growing into a giant tree, but it can take over and spread and bring life and bring relief. Lord, it's my prayer for the folks here at Pleasant Hill, 
wherever they may be watching, wherever they may be. Lord, would you help them realize that they are an incredible mustard seed for you. That the life that you have given them, the calling that you placed upon their life, the walk and the relationship they have with you, all of their gifts, their talents, their resources, you have placed within them just a tiny mustard seed. And oh Lord, I pray that you would let, that they would let you plant them deep in the soil of your word and in prayer. And that they would emerge from the soil different. That they would grow. And I pray that this congregation, this, this body of Christ that gathered in this place would be planted in the ground and, and would grow. And Lord, we know that with your kingdom, with you leading them, some of the best days lie ahead of them. Keep them searching for your kingdom. Keep them searching for your spirit and the leadership of your voice. May they follow you. May they live like you. And Lord, we know that you will cause the seed to grow and amazing things will happen for your glory and for your kingdom. So I just pray a prayer of blessing and encouragement upon them for their leaders, for Dr. Bob Moore as he's working with them and others. They would, you would give them a sense of your spirit and presence as they enter into a time of interim and as they search out for the future. May they know you're leading them and that the little seed is going to grow into something amazing in the months and years to come. Would you keep that image ever before them as they follow you? We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Final song this morning is Honor Christian Soldiers.
Um, I also just want to say that uh, we will be in touch. I'll be sending uh, my new address to you. Please um, just reach out to us. We will reach out to you. Let's stay in touch. And, uh, you know, our ministries take us into different places and different seasons of our lives. But us together as followers of Jesus are all moving in the same direction towards him. And so I really do pray a special blessing upon your ministry here uh, at Pleasant Hill. And would you pray, continue to pray for me and my family as we embark upon uh, a new season in our life that we would continue to be uh, used by Jesus where we are in our new setting. And I also sincerely look forward to the day when I can come and finish off two or three plates. <laughs> okay, I really look forward to that. I'm saving up. Okay, I'm saving it up now. Um, and uh, I just, I leave you with so much love and gratitude in my heart and for each one of you. But remember that the Lord has sent you forth as his witnesses and that the Lord has shown you what is good and what he requires of you. That you act justly and love mercy and walk humbly with him, your God. Go in his peace. Amen. I don't go anywhere yet. Okay. I've asked uh, Pastor Ho and Bob if he would come forward. If we could just have a prayer of sending off for Rob and his family this morning. Bob, would you mind leaving us in prayer this morning? Uh, it was so poignant to be here and uh, listen to Rob's heart and the expressions of love that he has for you. I know um, that you're here in part not only to worship the Lord, but because you wanted a moment also to share your love with him. Uh, that is a part of what God intended for pastors and people to be together. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the providence that brought Rob into this place. I thank you for those here who have worked with him for the purpose of furthering your kingdom. And I pray, Lord, that like a mustard seed planted, what has been done in these recent years would grow to bear fruit. And that the visible results of this labor would be seen in the days ahead. I pray for each one here who has grief in their hearts that something has ended more quickly than they expected or wanted. I pray for Rob as he processes a swirl of feelings about the past and the present and the future. And as always, we come back to your throne of grace to ask for the strength to be sufficient for the hour. We trust and believe that you work in all things for our good to those who have been called according to your purpose. We stand on that promise today for Rob and his family and for the good people in this church. And so I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you.